I'm Mary Polchenanoff, and welcome to Sure Things. Today's guest is Tim Kellogg, a recent um, addition to our Westbrook Library. He is the new director there. Welcome, Tim. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm very excited to have you here. Um, I realize that this should be a very interesting conversation given the fact that things have changed so much since you started. Uh, yes, uh, in, it, just including my presence. So. <laughs> right. So I wanted to know just a little bit before we got into how it's going in Westbrook so far, a little bit about your background um, in, in library science. Uh, so I've been working in libraries about five years now um, throughout Connecticut and um, it's been a transition. I, I started out um, on the floor helping the public and kind of grew in my skill set by helping with computers and other technologies um, just out of necessity and then I started working behind the scenes as a library business manager at another library shortly after that. Um, and then also was um, involved with library boards taking minutes for their monthly meetings. And I started to see this pattern of, well, I like doing all of these different pieces of library work. How can I do all of them at once without having to have three separate jobs to do it? Uh, so I said, well, the logical conclusion would be to become a library director, but in order to do that, I have to go to library school. Um, and some other course of events related to the development of my library career kind of necessitated starting library school so that I could advance um, mm -hmm. my career and become the uh, head of circulation at the Guilford Library, which I was doing until um, a few months ago. Um, and then the opportunity here in Westbrook came up and I said, you know, I have to, I have to put my name out there and see what happens. Um, and, uh, you know, as they say, the rest is history. Um, so here we, here we are. So now I went from having multiple library jobs at once to focusing all of my energies um, at the Westbrook Library, and I, I couldn't be happier. Uh, mm -hmm. The timing is interesting right. because it's 2020. Right, and we're going to talk more about that. <laughs> yeah. that. That is that you came right in uh, and missed all of that. Which right. is so, what got you from Colorado? Because you mentioned earlier before we went on that you were from Colorado to Connecticut. Yeah. Uh, so to make a long story short, so I grew up in Colorado, spent most of my early life in Colorado. Um, was studying for my undergraduate degree and got an opportunity to finish that degree in Washington State. So I left Colorado, mm. um, went and got my degree, came back to Colorado, started my first career, which had nothing to do with libraries. Um, and then I worked my way um, to the East Coast in that career and I was working in New York at the time, and I met my wife, but she's from Connecticut, so okay. it connection. was sort of a foregone conclusion <laughs> okay. of not if, but when I was going to move to Connecticut. Yeah. And in 2015, uh, we, we came here, yeah. and oh, that's, that's at the same time, that's when my library career started. Um, and just months after moving to Connecticut. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. Were you surprised, because you seem like a young library director, it's a lot of responsibility. As I looked at, I looked at your LinkedIn and I saw all your background, that was amazing. Were you surprised when you uh, went ahead, put your name in the hat and got the position? Um, so yes and no. I'm not surprised that I am qualified or able mm -hmm. to handle the mm -hmm. responsibility of the position because of the level of work that I did for the other libraries that I was with and the amount of effort and mm -hmm. ability that I will put behind whatever I do. So that in that respect, no. But given the fact that I am still months away from finishing my library degree, that is a bit unusual. <laughs> um, 
but I think the combination of um, experience and education that I have, as well as my prior mm -hmm. background mm -hmm. uh, working with people and, and serving the public in that capacity, yeah. um, r really kind of opened this door. I, um, I could see that point. As I said, looking on your background and all the, the tasks, I could definitely see that between budgeting and the, all the technology, that was pretty amazing. So you get, you put your, your name in the hat and you get, uh, you get the position. When did mm -hmm. that all happen? So um, interview process happened in late spring, so kind of in the middle of everything going on with the pandemic and I wasn't sure how that was gonna play out because um, I, I put my application in before everything shut down, like right before everything shut down. Yeah. Um, and the library decided to stay on schedule with the process, which was amazing. Uh, so we, we did the whole process via Zoom, um, which is probably about the most interesting experience right. you welcome, could have. Welcome in, to 2020. Yes, in uh, <laughs> just making decisions for your future, right? So um, we did that and then I was offered the position and I started in July. The library was still closed when I started. So literally my first task as director was figure out how and when we will reopen. So when you, so speaking of that, because you know, I've talked to a few different segments of the population on how they got ready for it and how they prepared. Were you in a collaboration with other libraries in the area on how to do that? Absolutely. Oh, okay, um, so. Yeah. So I, was and still am attending uh, multiple weekly meetings for different facets of what libraries are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so for instance, later today after we're done, I will be having my weekly COVID-19 meeting with the Lion Consortium um, to discuss where the libraries are at and like, you know, who's, who's modifying services, why, and you know, all that's going into that. Are, are um, you about on the same page with these area yeah, libraries I, about? I, yeah. I would say the Westbrook Library is, is pretty similar to where everyone else is at at this point. When, when I came on board, uh, not quite yet because we hadn't opened, um, but now most of us are doing about the same things and mm -hmm. we're all being cautious and careful um, because we just don't know um, you know, whether we're going to have to roll things back in a few mm -hmm. months or not. Did um, you keep the same hours as, as pre-COVID for no, the library? No. Um, so we have modified hours. Mm -hmm. um, people can now come into the library between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Um, to browse and borrow books without an appointment and to use computers or study spaces okay. they need an appointment between those hours. Uh, you can also come in Saturdays from 9 to 1, but those are, those are modified hours because our COVID-related practices have added new elements to the job that didn't exist before March. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a matter of, you know, having the ability to do all of that in the time that we have right. and the, with the staffing that we have. So we will gradually expand, but the other factors involved in that um, are we're following our state level protocols mm -hmm. and our local level protocols from our health director. Um, and I don't want to move any faster than anyone is sure. ready for us to move. Sure. Uh, at the same time, um, I am ready and willing to modify our services as we are able. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the approach that we're kind of taking is what are other libraries doing and how can we collaborate with them? Uh, what are we legally required to do from the state? Mm -hmm. And what is our local contextual best practice for health? Mm -hmm. um, and Keeping so- all those factors, yeah. I'm working with a number of people. I'm not, I'm not making those decisions in a vacuum. Yeah. Uh, in case people are wondering, uh, the protocols that are in place at the library are in place because that's what's been 
agreed upon and signed off on uh, to make sure that we are legally compliant. It's not mm -hmm. about my personal opinion or anyone else's right. personal right. opinion going into it. I actually purposely wanted to stay away from that because of the fact that this issue became somewhat polarized and politicized. Um, yeah. I said, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I, it, is, it is my job as the library director to uh, pr present policy that will help with public safety in a situation like this, but at the same time, it wasn't going to be, well, I think we should do this, this, and this because that's just what I want to do. No, you it have was going to be, yeah. you know, what is it that we need yeah. to do, what protocols currently exist that we have to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, so for instance, you can't come into the library without a mask on. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's not a matter of opinion, that, yeah. is, a, that is a state mandate. Right. Um, so, I mean, and people are pretty used to that, I think, right, right now with the right. buildings. For, for the most part. Every once in a while you have to, you have to remind someone, like, oh, hey, you know, but yeah. that's the right. same when you go to the supermarket anywhere else, right? You do they have certain, do you have a certain number of people that can go be in at a certain time? I know some places yeah. you can we, only have 20 We do people. have capacity limits, have capacity. but that's not been a factor at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so in addition to kind of juggling, okay, we, we're offering... Most of our services at this point you can do in person mm -hmm. um, with certain limitations uh, in place on that. But we also are trying to let people know, hey, we're open now. Right. So you can come and do that. Uh, so as of yet, no, we have not, okay. we've not hit the capacity limit. The, the main reason we have appointments for our computers and our study space spaces is because um, those spaces are more limited than they were, mm -hmm. uh, particularly the computers. We have half as many computers in use right now as we used to. So we wanted to make sure that there was enough time for people that sure. wanted to use them to come in and use them. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they're done using them, uh, the library staff goes around and cleans them all. Now they have um, a time limit on those? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I, 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 I did look at the web, the website, um, mm -hmm. I do want to ask, is that pretty up to date? Yes. On uh, okay, so, so you had that. It, the time. website, especially with over the last maybe six weeks, the website was updated okay. almost daily. Yeah. Um, so you can trust that the information on there They're is exactly is right. current. Um, yeah. So you, you mentioned on the website that there's the, and I'm sure it's true, true with most libraries, that the return bin for books or whatever mm -hmm. is outside the quarantine, you know, you have a yeah. certain area. So, so the people bring and they leave their books. Is right. there a process then that you have to go through in order before you restack those books? Is there a um, Yeah, so the process that's kind of happening for all of the libraries in the Lion Libraries Online Consortium, yeah. uh, which we're a part of, mm -hmm. is a 96-hour mm -hmm. quarantine. Uh, and that information has been provided to us from the okay. Connecticut State Library and some tests that they've done with mm -hmm. the OCLC um, okay. in, or, in order to determine like what material types maintain presence of COVID. Okay, good. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna get back to that too. Okay. Um, we'll be right back after this brief break. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kelly. It is my job to teach employees the responsible way to sell both tobacco and electronic cigarettes. As of October 1st, 2019, a customer must be at least 21 years old to purchase a tobacco product or an electronic cigarette. The law also says all employees must card anyone who appears to be under the age of 30 years old. The free updated prevention education program will be available on October 1st, 2019 at cttobaccotraining.com. Community TV your neighborhood TV. Publicly funded and a reliable partner for cable companies nationwide. It provides transparent coverage of local and state government, education, and public programming. A digital town green that can be watched anywhere, anytime, and on any device. Watch us on today's high-tech distribution methods. Community TV in Connecticut. Local. Unfiltered. Reliable. And, and yours. yours. Hi, welcome back to Shore Things. I'm here uh, today with Tim Kellogg, director of the library at Westbrook. Welcome back. So Tim, we were talking about um, the bin, actually how people return books with, during quarantine. Mm -hmm. And um, 
that the, it sounds like the procedure, like in most places, is after a certain number of hours, those books are safe. Right. Uh, am I correct on that one? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so depending on the material type, certain material types maintain presence of COVID longer than others. Uh, so all of our all of our books and items that people check out, um, the reason we ask them to put them in the book drop that's outside, we have one at the front door and a drive up one at the back door, um, is so that we can quarantine them more easily because we have to mm -hmm. regardless. Mm -hmm. um, so when they are quarantined, they don't get checked in for four days, which means uh, they're going to remain on people's accounts, uh, which we get a lot of questions about, but people won't get fined for that. Okay. Uh, they just have to stay on there that's until they're quarantined. There. Yes. So it's four days and then they yes. can be reshelved. Yes, that's um, correct. And then I know we talked briefly about um, that I noticed on the website about the newspapers and mm -hmm. magazines, they're kind of in a different category. Right, so we kind of had a choice with the newspapers and magazines to decide, okay, are we going to discontinue this service, which is a very popular service for oh, our patrons, right. um, because of the fact that you know people like to come in and read those things in addition to borrowing them, particularly the magazines. Um, so we can't necessarily quarantine them all, uh, particularly in newspapers. Do you really want to read today's news in four days? Uh, so uh, our, our options were take them off the shelves, figure out a way to quarantine them, which then becomes a space issue, um, mm. and also um, do what we are doing, which says you can use the newspapers and magazines, uh, but be aware that traces of COVID can last on these surfaces um, anywhere from one to four days. Uh, so, okay. so you, just you are give using them at your own risk. At your own risk, right? I, right. I saw that on that. That's a, that's interesting on that. Now, you um, you have your children's librarian. Mm -hmm. Is is there anything happening at all with programming right now? Uh, yes, we're actually we're actually working on that. Our our children's librarian all summer long did a virtual story hour okay. uh, and not too long ago uh, did an outdoor story hour for the kids and just as of last week we hired a public service librarian um, and she will be working with us on our young adult teen and tween programming as well as our technology programming. Uh, so you're gonna see a lot more um, programming related services coming to fruition in the near future. Yeah. We're just figuring out how to do that. It's interesting because when I looked on your website, I noticed that title, Public Service Librarian, and I had, I had no idea, so it's interesting you're explaining. So she's really taking the older children Right. And, to, and the technology piece. Right. So, so Ariel, our public service librarian, um, has sort of three very distinct pieces to her job, which is why she's the public service librarian. So she, she manages our borrowing operations. Mm -hmm. uh, she's going to manage our young adult services and programming related to that. Uh, and then our technology assistance and programming as well. Uh, and I mean, I'll have a fairly decent hand in the technology sure. programming uh, myself, but um, sh she really has those three unique umbrellas as part of her job description. Um, Does she have any um, goals in sight? I mean, that just sounds like a fascinating yes. combination with that population. Does she have goals that she's looking to implement for those? For that population? She, she absolutely does. I can't say too much about the okay. specifics of those goals oh. just yet because, I mean, she literally started the job a week ago. <laughs> um, so, but we are working on that. So, yeah. I could, because I can just imagine the technology uh, part of that really right. drawing in some of those students, those the, children. That would be amazing. The other big part of our technology piece, so the, the library just. Um, just appointed a contractor um, for our technology room project to be completed, which will be a flexible technology and programming workspace uh, specifically designed to be of interest to our teen groups, but also to have the ability to do really um, 
different kinds of tech programs that we otherwise hadn't been able to do. Um, and that project uh, got a little bit delayed with COVID-19, but now it is back on track and so we're getting ready to start it, that very so soon. Be a separate room yes. or studio, almost like a studio with equipment that, that yeah. children or young adults could use, it, or I guess anyone think, could use. Think of it like a cross between a programming room and a, um, like a, a flexible community work area, something you can make into whatever you need it to be at any given point in time, depending on the type of programming or type of class you want to have. So you could do a class in there, you could have like an event in there, you could have a program in there. Right. Uh, you can also just turn it into a wider study space. Mm. Um, we're going to have lots of versatility involved in that. So it's really a flex um, space. Yes. A flex yes. space that people would be able to uh, It use. is designed so that as little as possible will be nailed down. Uh, uh, you know, so that we can do with it what we need to do, depending on the circumstance. Were you, uh, when you came into the position, because that's exciting, I mean, and then again, yes. you ha just hired the new mm -hmm. uh, public service person as well. When you came into the position, did they say, hey, and by the way, here you go for your initiatives? Or did you, <laughs> did you yeah. walk in yeah. with these initiatives already going? So, I mean, I knew some of that, right? Okay. you know, was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I found out sort of mid-process of coming on board that one of my first initiatives would be to look for and hire our public service okay. librarian. Yeah. Um, I knew full well that getting the technology room project uh, up and running was going to be a huge initiative. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as I said, the first thing was planning for reopening. Sure. Uh, so, so those, yeah, those, those, right. three, those three things yeah. I, it was pretty clear from day one, like, yeah. this is... That was on your plate. These are your yeah. top priorities, right. and go. <laughs> did you get all your staff back after COVID? After, I mean, coming when you opened up, did you get people back? So, that that's part of it. So, actually, through the process of learning, oh, we are going to be able to hire a public service librarian. Um, no. Uh, the, we had, so... My predecessor, Lou Daniels, who yeah. is well loved in this town, um, <clears throat> he um, he knew he was going to retire, yeah. um, and then his assistant librarian, um, Joan Geisler, uh, she she decided to retire, kind of in the midst of all of this, mm -hmm. um, and that knowing that was then it was like okay, well now. Not only am I coming on board fresh, we have another position we need to fill. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. which is exciting, as I, you know, on one turn way because you are leading the charge here now at the mm -hmm. library. You're the director, mm -hmm. and you can then formulate that into your vision, and which is what a little bit I want to talk about as we're wrapping yeah. up. What do you have in your vision besides the the two positions that we talked about? Right. What do you see down the pike, say in five years, that you'd like to happen at Westbrook Library? So, some of the things that I'd like to see. So, when I came on board, it was very evident to me that this library is known for excellent customer service. I don't want to lose that. I want to mm -hmm. keep that momentum rolling. I want people to know that we're always going to be here for mm -hmm. them and do what they need to do. You've got some different faces on board doing that now, uh, but we're, we're here to serve the town and the community, and that is, that is our goal first and foremost. Mm -hmm. um, but the areas that I want to bring to the table uh, really involve our technology initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, so how can we make the best use of this new technology room that we're um, currently in the process of mm -hmm. getting the renovation started on um, and the building of that? Um, how can we make the most use of that? Um, how can we upgrade our other existing technologies so that everything's kind of coming together in sync at the same mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. um, you know, to make sure that not only do people have these services, but that 
their ideal and useful and they want to come yeah. in and say, oh, okay, the library's got this, this great yeah. new stuff for us to work with. Uh, I can come in and safely do whatever computer needs I mm -hmm. have uh, and, and not worry about um, you know, the state of the equipment. I can just trust that like, it's going to be good yeah. stuff and I can come in and... That's a big relief to a lot of people, you're right, right when right. we talk about that technology piece. So. Wow, that's pretty exciting. So you did hit the ground running, mm -hmm. certainly, as new director there in Westbrook, and we're, and we're happy to have you. And I'm glad we had this time, too, because I think it's important for people to know that you're open, mm -hmm. that you're ready, that you have all the safety processes in place. And I just assume that you're not allowed, I mean, you, you're not able to say when it'll be fully back to normal because nobody knows that at this point. Right, right. right. It's, not, it's right. not so much not allowed, like you said, we just don't know. You don't know. Uh, right, that's we, don't, right. we don't know. Everything is, everything is a day at a time. Right. Um, you know, if something happens tomorrow, it could change everything. It could change, um, yeah. And, and that's, just, that's just the new reality yeah. of living in 2020. In 2020, so. right. But, well, I want to thank you again, Tim. And I want to encourage everyone to get out to the Westbrook Library because it is open. So again, Tim Kellogg, new director at the Westbrook Library. So till next time, take care and thank you for tuning into Shore Things.